Is LMR400 the best cable to use for something like helium mining? Keep it simple, keep it real. I've launched a sequence of videos for helium mining over the last number of weeks and uh, one of the questions that came up or some of the things that I specifically mentioned was coaxial cable, which is something that RF Shop does quite a lot. Actually, more than half our business is based on coaxial cables and custom coaxial cables as I have here on the table as well. Um, so this specific topic is actually really close to my heart, not just for helium mining, but for all applications. Um, and I'm thinking about 4G, 5G, Wi-Fi, helium mining now, GPS, and then whatever customers use the coaxial cables for. So it, to me, it's, it's quite of a, um, a question that doesn't really have a dedicated answer. Now, I think for home users where you're looking at 10 meter and you want the absolute minimum cable length and you want to have a reasonably easy installation, done then yes it is definitely a uh, highly recommended cable to use but as i say here on this next slide that uh, is lmr the 400 best uh, the best cable to use no not really it is the most recommended cable makes the most sense but it's not the best cable you need to look at the whole setup so i think as a general rule of thumb when you look at um, kits and so forth yes it's it's the one to include if you want to keep the losses to a minimum the next question that i have on there is what's the lowest cost cable lowest lost Man, that's difficult. Lowest loss cable I can get. Well, as I say here, LMR400 is probably the lowest practical, pro lowest loss practical cable. I'm not having a good day with my language today. Like, but there's this thicker cable, LMR600, you even get LMR800 or 900 as well, which basically defines the diameter of the cable itself. So um, this is just a practical cable and it's quite a common cable to use. So that's why it's, it's definitely a, a very useful one. Now, I have it there. Did I mention that RF Shop does um, co custom coaxial cable? I'm not having a good day on my um, pronunciation. Um, custom coaxial cable. So we do all these cables, not just in a kit format. You don't have to buy a 10 meter cable. You can buy 5 meter, 10 meter, but you can also buy 9 meter, 8 meter cable, 11, 12 meter cable. We do all these cables in Lonsdale, South Australia. So if you need a specific cable for your setup, definitely contact our shop so we can help you with the cable, be it 400, 240, 105, or all other types of cables that might be available. Um, and then a question that I got in my first video was, can I do, can I do more about coaxial cables? So of course I can. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, but before I get into that, remember to stay connected to RF Shop. So please subscribe to our channel, like this video, and let me know by comments or either email or phone us if you want to see more of this specific topic uh, for future videos as well. And this is the video. There you go. That's the table that I wanted to discuss. So I have the cables here in front of me just to show what the differences are, just a subtle way. Um, the table is rough because never is the table, the, the data sheets that you get exactly for the values that you want. So if I specifically want to look at helium, then I have problems on the RG316 to get the exact value. But the table gives you the order of magnitude, what you can expect, and then also what you should um, what you should look for on these cables. And if it's way out from these values, there's something wrong in your cable. Assembly might be wrong, cable might be damaged somewhere, or the connector might not be in uh, in good shape. Now, um, I'll have a, I have a slide after this just on connectors as well. Um, so as I say here, the, the four common ones that I show is just four cables. There's so many more cables. There's, there's literally hundreds of cables available for these. The um, RG316 is the really small one. Um, you can see it's normally pink in color because it's basically um, the, the cover is, is, is pink. Uh, very flexible cable, very handy to use. Normally we use it only for up to one meter of length in any of these technologies I show there. So even on Wi-Fi, uh, don't go longer than, not even, because if it's high frequency, it gets worse. But it's, it's the kind of cable that gets used inside an enclosure. So you have a box and you need to route one thing from A to B and there's, there's actually components in there. That's the kind of cable that you would use. One thing that I can say now that I have this one in my hand is, as you see here, this is an N-type connector. N-type connectors are typically not so good on these small cables because in, in our RF world, radio frequency world, the step that the radio waves need to flow through from a quite a big connector down to a smaller one, if the manufacturer doesn't actually compensate for that step in there, so that that step that you have in there is not properly um, designed, you have a problem. And the cheapest connectors you can get from um, you know, mainland in Asia, they will 
probably have a problem there. So look for proper brands, in our case, Jibo, um, Taiwanese brand that we use. They have a very good interface from A to B, from the connector to the cable, but that's probably not something that the helium miners would look for. That's something that our defense or automotive customers would look for. If you are 4G, a 5G, or Wi-Fi customer, that's the kind of thing that you would look for if you actually want to put this kind of cable inside a box. Now, the, the next one, which is quite common, is the um, 195. 195 is the same size as the RG58, so it's about 5mm diameter, extremely flexible still, quite useful. Um, up to 5 meters, this one works really well. Now, maybe again, not for the helium mining community because they are so sensitive about losses, so maybe not there, but for all the other applications, again, I have my list there. LoRaWAN is still there. So LoRaWAN, if it's the IoT side of helium network, actually, this is a really good cable to consider. Um, typically up to 5 meter, but if your application gives, um, gives you freedom for losses, worth considering. Double screened. Double screen means that it's very well shielded from all the other um, interferences that might run, run next to it. Now, the one that is in our 4G world the most popular and for us actually really useful is the 240. It's about 7mm diameter. It is slightly thicker than the um, RG or the RG58 equivalent low loss or CLF 195. Um, we run this cable to 10 meters up to 20 if we really want to in the 4G world. I'd say by 20 meters, we actually say, no, 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 we'd, we'd rather go for the 400. But the 240 is uh, extremely flexible compared to the 400. So if it is low loss that you want, but it's not extremely low loss, this is the cable we use, and this is the cable we use in our 4G and 5G um, antenna kits as well. But again, as I say, in the helium mining, they seem to have their, well, not they seem, they have their own requirements. They want to get the best because we're actually setting up a network. So not an end user, but you're actually part of the infrastructure. So that's where the key difference would be between helium network and the, um, the things like uh, the end users for 4G and 5G. Now, this is, of course, the one that, that gets talked about the most in the helium community, which is the 400 cable. Um, we have heaps of this. It gets normally gets the end type connector at the end. It's the lowest loss on my table that I show there. Um, you can get it very short. So because we do custom coaxial cable, you can make it as short as you want. One meter cable, it's not unheard of. We've done that a few times. So don't feel like you need to have a cable that's 10 meters or longer before you can consider CLF 400. You can do it for any length that you need. Just keep in mind when it's shorter than one meter, it gets quite hard to work with because it is I mean, this, this coil is 10 meters long, which is quite handy. Am I lying? That's 5 meters, sorry. This is a 5 meter coil, but it, I mean, that's as easy to use. But imagine this kind of cable that's as thick as this. If it's 1 meter and you want to route from A to B, it gets quite hot. I actually kind of, kind of jokingly say that you don't want your cable to tell you where you need to put your modem. You want your modem to be put in a place and then the cable can run easily to that position. But if you have a... a actually, there's a... Nighthawk M2, if this were to be placed in a position and this would, would have gone in there, then the cable would actually um, no, tell the position of the motor. Silly remark. Not, not very important. Then, um, so that's the table. Then the next one is, uh, this is the photo of a, a cable assembly from Jibo, an end type connected to a SMA reverse polarity or male RP SMA connector. I guess a couple of things that I wanted to, to address, you know, I can make a video about all the connectors types that are there. That's going to be a whole se series on its own. Um, but specifically now that we have a new community of radio users coming up, which is the Helium community, that is the connector type that is most commonly used. You'll see on the antenna, I have an antenna example here. Um, that's an end type female. Um, actually very common on these type of antennas. So that's also on the cables, on the kits that you normally get. We do use an N-type connector because antennas are commonly um, using an N-type connector, which is handy. It's, it's, at least there's some consistency in that part. So there's an N-type male, uh, female, that's the female. And there's the N-type male, simple. They would just go, um, go together without any trouble. Uh, ironically, I'm struggling. There we go, <laughs> got it right. So. That's, that's an easy fit and it's finger tight. Don't need to do any tooling or anything to connect those two together. All right, so that's the easy connector. The difficult connector is actually the SMA. Not so much um, just because it's an SMA, because SMA is a very common connector, gets used up to 18 gigahertz. But in the unlicensed bands, so think about 
950 megahertz in Australia, think about 2.4 gig for Wi-Fi, think about 5.8 gig for Wi-Fi. Those are unlicensed bands, meaning for years there's been relatively uncontrolled users. You can just design a radio, get it to use in there. Um, and if you look at history, that's where the reverse polarity came in. Now this is a reverse polarity female. You see a female body, the connector itself is a female body, but inside is a male pin. That's reverse, that's the opposite to what you normally would expect from an SMA. That's a problem. The problem is that if you have a male, normal male connector, you could connect that onto this as far as the thread is concerned, but it would be center pin to center pin because the two, two polarities actually clash. And then you can, if you force it in, you'll damage it. If you actually use a, the opposite, so you have two sockets going together, there won't be any connection. So it's, um, anyway, actually, this is literally an example that I could show. So SMI male classic. So that's just a conventional SMI male connector. This body would actually fit in there. But as you can see, the two pins are there. So it won't work. You can mechanically force them in. One of the two is going to break. Um, so in the helium mining community, they, those radios use reverse polarity SMA and that's why I have the photo on my screen there um, because that's the kind of cable that you will use and I can talk a lot about the um, genders and so forth but I think specifically what you need to remember is if it's an unlicensed application, unlicensed meaning it's a, a device that doesn't need um, actual license in, in order to transmit such as helium, such as Wi-Fi, they often, more often than not, use reverse polarity SMA connectors. If it's a cellular antenna, which is a license because the network operator Optus Telstra Vodafone owns that specific band that you're transmitting in, they, um, they tend to have this, the classic SMA connectors. Very confusing, but still it's there and it needs to be, um, it needs to be said because it is what it is. Um, on cables, that's really all I have to say about that. It's already been a longer video than I planned, so thanks for watching. I hope to see you on the next video soon. Thanks, bye-bye.